नमस्ते एवरी वन आई एम अभय योगी एंड टूडे आई एम विथ आदि गुरु एंड वी आर गोइंग टू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट मिस्ट्री ऑफ डिसीजेस लाइक वाई डिसीज हैपन्स वॉट्स द रूट कॉज ऑफ इट एंड वॉट आर द अदर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इट बिकॉज नाउ इट इज हेल्थ इज सो मच इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर ईच एंड एवरी वन एंड वी आर जस्ट ट्राइंग टू बी लिविंग हेल्थी लाइफ टेकिंग वाइटामिन्स having regular checkups and all still people catch a lot of diseases and we don't know why it happens sometimes we just blame on other uh, lifestyle and other uh, aspects in life and uh, today we are going to understand why the disease actually happens so adi guru uh, my first question is about the root cause what is the root cause of any disease in human body okay so you said root cause of disease in human body so that is a very very important question very important thing to pay attention for that he is asking root cause in the body but root cause needs to be understood actually in your existence existence entire existence not just in physical body the manifestation of any disease happens in the physical body later or after it has already happened in your sukshma body or you can say subtle body uh, okay. you are talking about the energy bodies no so let's understand how many bodies are there before we get into disease part of it let's understand how many bodies are there so this body that you have mm-hmm. this is your physical body we also called it called it uh, as uh, sthul sharir or physical body or anything that has material into it a gross body gross body the real definition of this body is bhautik bhautik body now bhautik word today equates to physics or anything that has uh, some measurement some physical way of measuring it but that's not the real meaning of the word bhautik the real meaning of the word bhautik is that which is constructed or created using panchbhutas panchbhutas means five bhut are there right five basic elements are there so that is what this body is made up of that is why this body is called as sthul sharira bhautik sharira or you can call it The physical body gross body five elements so five elements okay. is what it is basically made up of mm-hmm. and then other than five elements this existence also is made up of five different kinds of pran shakti oh there are five different pran shakti yes five different kinds of pran shakti prana apana vyana five different panch pran vayus are there and mm-hmm. those panch pran vayus are the shaktis which which actually operate and your digestive system your excretory system your circ blood circulatory system all the systems endocrine systems every system that you have in your body basically is a that system is functional in you on your autonomous nervous system is functional in you because of those panch pranas okay okay so that is part of your sukshma sharira all panch pranas are the part of your sukshma sharira which is which are creating but other than this this shaktis these panch pranas these are more like you know mechanical powers which are going to operate or you which are going to operate different systems in your body but other than that so there are some very very important parts of your sukshma sharir so if we start from the creation point of view from the sankhya darshan point of view then you have sattva rajas and tamas three basic elements that are responsible for this entire creation and that includes your creation your body your existence as well so then these three when are the equilibrium when is disturbed in these three then mahat is created what do you mean mahat okay. yeah mahat is buddhi buddhi tatva the element for your intellect that is what is not intelligence intellect so that is what is created using mahat 
what else is created other than buddhi or intellect? Another thing that is created is ahankara. Ego. Now here, ahankara is not your emotional ego. Okay. It's not like, oh, I have this, I have that, I am this, I am that. It's not that kind of ahankara. Here we are talking about ahankara actually means basic, one of the basic element of creation. While when in general language, when you say, okay, somebody is egoist or somebody is very ahankari or have a lot of ahem, at that time we are referring to the ahankara that is an emotion in you, that is a bhava in you. Okay, here we are talking about the basic element of creation that is called as ahankara. So this ahankara is not the same ego which we are carrying every day? No, no, no. no, no. When you say ego, there is no other translation in uh, Hindi for ego. So you will call it ahankara. Yes. And it's, it's, a, it's a very vikrat form or you can say distorted ah. form of the basic element. So mm -hmm. it's like somebody gave you a fresh milk and you when, you when there is a distortion that happens in it, then only you can make a yogurt or a, mm -hmm. uh, something else from the mm -hmm. milk. So when it was pure creation element, it's called as ahankara. So that is what I am referring to. So uh, what I understand, apart from the five elements, this is also an element uh, in creation? Yes, it is. Because okay. it will further be divided. And furthermore, different kinds of things will be created using that ahankara element. One of the things that gets created is your man. Or you can call it chitta. That is what is created using ahankara. Ahankara actually gets into three different kinds of division. Mm -hmm. Satvik ahankara, rajasik ahankara and tamasik ahankara. Again, because the creation started from sattva, rajas and tamas. Mm -hmm. So three kinds of ahankara. Satvik ahankara is what creates man or chit in you. And then satvik ahankara is which creates five jnanendriya in you. What are jnanendriya? You already know that. Like, but before we go to jnanendriya, I have one question. What is the difference between man and a chitta? So, both words are same. But when we are referring to their different aspects of functional, different functional aspects, then we use different words. In general, man is sufficient because it is connected to it. the transaction between man happens through the different five Gyanendriya that we have. Gyanendriya are the connection points of with your uh, five uh, senses. They are the connection point. So when in reference to your five Indriya you are referring to, then you can call it Man or Manas. So, but when we are talking about whatever input or experience you had and it is stored in it, that's when we call it and it has become a Sanskara, it has become a Chit in the, in, inside the Chit, it became a Vritti, so when from the storage point of view you are trying to refer to it, mm -hmm. then you call it chitta. Oh, so what I understand, coming back to the Gyanindriyas, like uh, we have eyes, uh, ear and smell and yes. you know, we take inputs. Yeah. So what I understand from Gyanindriyas, uh, man is the uh, aspect which is uh, experiencing it, but the storage house is basically gone into chitta. Man is not experiencing anything. Man is where the experience, actual real experience is happening. But the experiencer is always you. Mm -hmm. Experiencer is always an Atma. So Gyanendriya, five Gyanendriya, Rajasik Ahankara is used to create five Karmendriya in you. Mm -hmm. Hast, Pad, Upasth and Payu, Pani, five. So five Karmendriya are created using Rajasik Ahankara. What is created using Tamasik Ahankara? Five Tanmatras. Shabd, Ras, Roop, Gandh, 
and so on. Five Tanmatras are created using Tamasic Ahankara. And then no further division happens from all these things. Five Gyanindriya will not create anything further on. That's it. Man will not create, Man or Chit will not further be divided and nothing else will be created. So creation has stopped at that level. Five Karmendriya has happened, nothing else will be created from that point on. Mm -hmm. But from the Tamasik Ahankara, when five uh, Tanmatras were created, they will further degrade and create Panchabhutas. Mm -hmm. Those Tanmatra, the role of five Tanmatras is like a plug to have a, when Sukshma Sharira, subtle body, takes up a physical body, then where is that plug and play that happens? Panchabhutas are dharan. Where is that dharan kriya that happens? It happens only because we have five tanmatras. Okay. So that is the plug that helps us expand and create the physical body. Okay. So, okay. So what I understand now is like... This is your sukshm sharira. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we have tried to understand the different aspects of this physical body or the uh, the sukshma sharira, sharira which we were talking about so now coming back to the original question the disease yes. so with, so if that disease is not coming directly to this body so what is the cycle or you can say what is the sequence which follows once it is manifested into a body as a disease yeah that which you call disease is nothing but a hard wire patterns in you but the root cause of all diseases is ignorance. Agyan, Mithya Agyan, Bhranti Agyan, irresponsible kind of, adverse kind of wisdom. Mm -hmm. That is responsible for all kinds of wisdom. Now here we are not talking about just because you have never went to South Africa and you don't know what the capital is. That kind of ignorance will create disease in you. No. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of ignorance that creates the diseases in any human being is of existential in nature. Because you do not have existential jnana, that is when diseases will manifest. Now because you think that okay it's everything the entire creation, I have to run, I have to do this, I, have, I am responsible or at times through your indriya, through your five senses, you saw one person, the other person also saw the same person. Both of you are looking at the same person, but one person is experiencing joy, another person is experiencing lot of hatred because of his or her own experience, right? So the more you have all these kind of emotions, you go on experiencing life, taking input, through your indriya, it gets stored in your chitta. Mm -hmm. And if you do not resolve it at the level of man, at the level of chitta, if you do not resolve it, if you do not dispel your ignorance there, then one by one, each and every chitta vritti is going to at first become a mental disturbance, emotional disturbance, and if you even do not address it at that time, finally it's going to become a disease in your body. It will manifest in your body. For example, lot of suppressed anger. Just because you are angry on life, you are angry with God, you are angry with everything else around you, nobody gave you this respect or money and whatever you did for them, that kind of anger, that kind of frustration in less than five years will result into high blood pressure. And we are angry and <laughs> <laughs> I know you are not an angry person. <laughs> Everybody is nowadays angry on something. But yes, it's an easy to understand yeah, yeah. example. You want to blame someone? <laughs> yeah, everybody wants to blame somebody. So the seed of all your diseases is actually in your chitta. So we'll talk in detail next time in next videos we'll talk about how it takes shape how it gets transferred and how different but i would recommend one thing every every one of you 
should read Sankhya Darshan, mm -hmm. should understand how and what your creation is made up of. Okay, cool. Uh, one thing before we close this one. Uh, so what we have talked about is the term is called emotional blockage or you would like to call something else. Emotions happens a way later than whatever else has happened in your sukshma body, in your subtle body. So it doesn't start with emotion, it's just like another symptom. Mm -hmm. Just like you have pain here or pain there or in your body or you might be sneezing or you may have cough or some other physical symptom. So for you as of now, uh, emotional body is part of sukshma sharira, but I wouldn't consider that. And I'll explain you next time why. Okay. So we cannot say that all your physical and psychological mm -hmm. blocks become diseases. That psychologic psychology is just symptomatic thing. Mm -hmm. But still you need to understand the root part of it. What causes, what kind of emotions converts into which kind of disease. So we'll take something even before psychology starts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for thanks for explaining the different uh, aspects of it uh, about sukshma sharira and uh, different uh, component of sukshma sharira. So we will uh, meet again with our next question, uh, and uh, for the time being, Jai Shivai. Namaste, Jai Shivai.